Smart electric mobility is part of the energy transition and depends on renewable energy. For a business uh, perspective, the economic triangle creates added value uh, for our economy. The triangle is formed by renewable energy, connected logistics and smart e-mobility. These three factors form a sustainable solution which combines ecology and economy. This is the crucial message to keep in mind. Health and wealth are depending on affordable clean energy. In former days, oil for our transportation came spontaneously out of the earth. Nowadays, that's not the case anymore. We must inject hot water or gases to get it out. There is a lot of energy involved in harvesting modern oil. The energy returns on energy invested ratio is dropping significantly. For new developments like tar sands, the ratio is dropping near 50%, which means it costs the equivalent of half a barrel for the production of one barrel crude oil. The question is, can we afford this? And the answer is no. This makes energy economically far too expensive for modern society to keep our wealth. And at the same time it hurts our health because it's not a clean energy solution. For shale oil it's even worse. The costs are high and the return on investments are low. It passed the so-called net uh, energy cliff. And passing this cliff is risky for economy. Fortunately, solar energy and modern wind energy are already on the safe side of the cliff. If we shift to renewable, wind, solar and water-based energy, we can still safeguard our wealth. And at the same time our health, because it will not be using polluting energy anymore. To give an example, this is the energy transition plan for Rotterdam. The graph is the CO2 emission for various, various transportation modes. More or less one third is shipping, one third is trucks and one third is passenger cars. The emission data is from 1990 to 2005 and shows the forecast for 2025. As shown, the energy intensity and CO2 emission is rising while the target is half of 1990. In fact, the 2005 level was already 60% over target. Radical change will be needed to meet the Rotterdam as well the Paris targets. Of course, CO2 is not the only tailpipe emission caused by fossil energy use. Locally more important are the emissions of toxic gases like NOx and fine dust of soot. In general, the only solution for local zero emission traffic are electric vehicles. In the 21st century, we should realize the transition to sustainable renewable energy. And for this radical change, we need electric or fuel cell electric cars, trucks and buses. New economies like China really understand that coal and oil will be economic showstoppers. Energy is a chain from oil platform refinery to distribution or to utilities for electricity. If comparing fossil to renewable electricity, there will be big differences in the chain. Renewable electricity will already be the energy carrier at the start of the chain. It can be harvested decentralized from sun wind or water and used directly without storage. Or it can be harvested in a centralized places with high efficiency like solar or wind farms. Certainly, 
in remote places it could be a solution to store and ship electricity in hydrogen. Hydrogen can be compressed and liquefied or bonded to metal crystals and in chemical solutions. Electric cars as a business opportunity is no single solution that fits all. It is horses for courses. Solutions are depending on small or big cars or whether used for city, highway or during 24-7. What all electric cars have in common is that the propulsion comes from an electric motor. This is essential because the electric motor replaces the inefficient and polluting electric, uh, internal combustion engine. Batteries or hydrogen tanks are options for onboard storage of energy like fuel tank. The simplest solution that everyone knows from his childhood is the battery electric system. The driving range is limited by the battery size so the trend is to use larger batteries. When depleted the battery needs recharging which is time consuming compared to a refill. Larger batteries with high power fast charging is practical but is also heavy and expensive. The efficiency is high, the driving costs are low and there are no emissions at all. However, even with bigger batteries the so-called range anxiety is still around the corner. The practical solution for range anxiety is the range extender, in fact an onboard generator. A combustion engine can be used as generator and provides driving ranges as a normal vehicle. The refill time is short as we are used to and the charging power can be modest. Although complex, the cost of hybrids which are combining the best of both worlds is fair. If the range extender is only used for long journeys, emissions will be zero in daily commuting. The nice aspect of this transition vehicle is that the user will start to feel fuel anxiety. Interrupting a trip for a refill is less convenient than charging the car overnight at home. Also the cost difference will be demonstrated since the vehicle drives cheaper in EV mode. The combination of a fuel cell and battery electric propulsion is also an option. Here a fuel cell will make electricity from hydrogen to avoid the battery from depletion. The costs are still high, efficiency is less than batteries, but the only emission is water vapor. Fuel cell electric vehicles are a solution when driving the whole day or long distances. Refilling of hydrogen is fast, so there could be no anxiety anymore. These are the major EV solutions today. Probably there will be even more in the future. This is the portfolio of Toyota, a fashionary car company known from the Prius hybrids. According to their vision, only the small city vehicles will be battery electric. For mid-size vehicles they offer the whole range from hybrids to fuel cell electric. They also develop fuel cell electric buses and trucks for 24-7 and long distance. This graph shows the result of a well-to-wheel efficiency study in urban driving. Several electric vehicle scenarios are compared with the internal combustion vehicle. 
For internal combustion vehicles, the orange part represents the production of fuel. The large blue part is the internal combustion engine energy losses. And the purple fragment is the useful energy that hits the road for driving. On average, well to tank is 15%, tank to wheel is 71%, so total efficiency is only 14%. Between 72 and 89% of the energy is wasted by driving the internal combustion vehicle. In fact, the century-old combustion engine concept is a far better heater than a motor. Let's look at the electric vehicle options now. The difference is the source of the electricity. Even the worst case with coal-powered utilities is better than the internal combustion engine. The best case is electricity with green certificates, which is 100% based on renewable energy. The average total efficiency is then 34%, while 60% efficiency will be possible in the future. When talking about business, it is very important to look at the future. The future of fossil oil is illustrated in the picture to the left. Fossil oil will be based more on tar sands, shale fracking, and deep sea arctic drilling. This means that about two times more energy is needed to harvesting the future oil. As a consequence, efficiency of well to wheel will end up to be half of today's, which drops then below 10% and that's completely unacceptable. However, for renewable electricity energy, Harvesting is getting better and better. Thanks to that, the average total well-to-wheel efficiency will be raising significantly. And that is, of course, what we need for our future business. Thank you.